Ramona and her mother. Chapter 6, Ramona's New Pajamas. As Mrs. Quimby had predicted, once Beezus washed her hair, she looked like Beezus again. Because they were so glad to see her looking like a 7th grader, Ramona and her mother did not point out that her new haircut did not look much different from the cuts her mother had given her. As for Ramona, for a few days, grown-ups said, Why, how nice your hair looks! As if they were surprised that her hair could look nice. Children asked, How come your bangs are longer in the middle? Because I'm a pixie, Ramona answered, or sometimes, Because I'm a valentine. In a few days, everyone forgot about her hair, including Ramona. Clearly, Ramona's parents had something more important on their minds. At first, Ramona did not know what it was. She heard long, serious conversations coming from their bedroom, and when she knelt by the furnace outlet to try to catch what they were saying, she could make out only a few words. I don't. School. Why don't? We could. Teacher. School. They sounded as if they might be arguing. I told you not to fight anymore! Ramona yelled through the furnace pipes. There was a startled silence, then laughter from the bedroom. Afterward, Ramona could hear only whispers. Ramona decided her parents must be talking about her. What could they say about Beezus in school? Nothing. What could they say about Ramona in school? To begin with, there was her spelling. For a while, Ramona expected her parents to have one of those little talks with her about really working at her spelling or being a better girl. When they did not, she put their conversations out of her mind and went back to twitching her nose, pretending she was her mother's little rabbit, warm and snug and loved like little bears and bunnies in the books her mother read to her at bedtime when she was little. One evening, when Ramona had turned from a pixie into a rabbit, she held her feet close together and, twitching her nose, went hopping down the hall. Thud, thud, thud. Ramona, do you have to do that? asked her mother, who was watching the evening news on television while she let down a hem on a dress for Beezus. Ramona stopped being her mother's little rabbit, but she did not answer. Of course she did not have to hop. She wanted to. Her mother should know that. Mrs. Quimby glanced up from her sewing. Why, Ramona, she remarked, those pajamas are way too small for you. And so they were. Ramona, who had been outgrowing clothes all her life, discovered that the sleeves reached only halfway to her wrists, the legs halfway to her ankles, and the seat was too tight. Her pajamas had been washed so often that the fuzz had worn off the flannel. I have another pair put away for you, said Mrs. Quimby. I'll get them and you can change. Did Beezus outgrow them? Ramona was all too familiar with her mother's habit of putting away for Ramona the clothes that Beezus had outgrown several years before. Mrs. Quimby went to the linen closet. Not this time. I bought them on sale. She handed Ramona a pair of white pajamas printed with colored balloons. They were so new, they were still folded and pinned together. Ramona quickly pulled out the pins and changed from two small pajamas into two big pajamas. The sleeves covered her hands, the legs rumpled around her ankles, and the seat bagged. But oh, how soft and warm and cozy they felt, just like the fur of a baby rabbit. Just fold up the bottom so you won't trip, said Mrs. Quimby. They'll shrink when they're washed, and you'll grow into them before you know it. Ramona did as she was told and discovered that now that her pajamas were no longer tight, she could stoop lower and jump higher. Twitching her nose, she became a rabbit once more and thump, thump, thumped down the hall to bed where she snuggled down warm and cozy as a little rabbit in a nest in the pajamas that had never been worn by her big sister. The next morning, she awoke still feeling warm and cozy she lay in bed, not wanting to take off the pajamas. They felt so good. Ramona, come along and eat your oatmeal while it's still hot, her mother called to her. Reluctantly, Ramona got out of bed, dabbed a damp washcloth in the middle of her face, and, still in her pajamas, went to breakfast. Why, Ramona, you aren't even dressed. Mrs. Quimby, having finished her breakfast, was rinsing her dishes. Mr. Quimby and Beezus were carrying theirs to the sink. Don't worry, mother, said Ramona. I'm not going to school in my pajamas. As soon as she had spoken, Ramona thought how pleasant it would be if she could go to school in her pajamas and feel the soft fuzz against her skin all day. 
Don't dawdle. Mr. Quimby kissed the top of Ramona's head and left for work. Ramona twitched her nose. Ramona quickly ate her oatmeal. This was easy because oatmeal did not require much chewing. And as she ate, she thought about wearing her pajamas to school. Suddenly, she recalled seeing the kindergarten class in their red plastic fire hats, trooping back from a visit to the fire station, which made her think of her own visit to the firehouse when she was in kindergarten and how she had loved her fire hat. For days afterward, whenever she found even two newspapers piled together, she had called her parents' attention to a fire hazard. She also recalled how astonished she had been to learn that firemen slept in their underwear so that they could jump out of bed and into their clothes if they were called out in the night. Of course, Ramona did not sleep in her underwear, but if she put her clothes on over her pajamas, she could pretend to be a fireman anyway. As Ramona rinsed her dishes, she stopped being a rabbit and became a fireman. She raced down the hall and pulled her slacks on over her pajama bottoms. Fortunately, she was not really on her way to fight a fire because she had a hard time stuffing the folded up legs into her slacks. Then she jerked on her turtleneck sweater over the pajama top. The knitted neck and wristbands hid the flannel nicely. Ramona felt stuffed, but cozy and warm. She remembered to brush her teeth and was ready for school. Like a fireman, she pulled on her boots, grabbed her raincoat and hat, and raced into the kitchen for her lunchbox. Bye, mother, she called out as she ran out the back door. Where's the fire? Her mother called out after her. How did she guess? Ramona wondered as she ran towards school. Then she decided her mother had not really guessed because she often asked where the fire was when Ramona was in a hurry. A warm, misty spring rain was falling. Bits of green tipped the black branches of trees. Ramona slowed down to investigate crocus buds, like tiny yellow and blue Easter eggs, that were pushing up through a neighbor's lawn. Then she ran on as fast as she could in her stuffed condition, her mouth open, wailing like a fire engine, her boots clomping on the sidewalk. She paid no attention to the people walking to the bus stop who looked at her in surprise. Firemen must get awfully hot, thought Ramona, when she arrived panting and sweating at Glenwood School. Ramona was glad to sit down on the floor of the cloakroom and pull off her boots. At least her feet felt cooler. She flopped down at her desk. Her face was flushed and her pajamas no longer felt as soft as a baby rabbit. They were damp with sweat. Maybe pretending to be a fireman wasn't such a good idea after all, thought Ramona, and wondered if anyone would think she looked different. As it turned out, only Davy noticed because Davy always kept an eye on Ramona, who had been chasing him ever since kindergarten. You look fat, he said. I ate a big breakfast, answered Ramona. Then she added, Davy in the gravy, to keep Davy quiet. She knew he did not like to be called Davy in the gravy. The classroom seemed unbearably hot, and her clothes felt as tight as the skin on a sausage. As Ramona stood for the flag salute, she wished she had something to unbutton. Later, as she bent over her workbook, she could not help trying to squirm inside her damp clothes. Mrs. Rudge walked slowly up and down between the desks, looking over shoulders at workbooks. Ramona, finding it difficult to think about her work when she was so uncomfortable, noticed that Davy crooked his arms around his page and bent his head low to hide his work while Becky sat up straight so Mrs. Rudge would be sure to see how perfect her work was. I like the way Davy keeps his eyes on his own work, said Mrs. Rudge. Davy's ears turned pink with pleasure. Ramona quickly lowered her eyes to her workbook and remembered that her parents had had more serious talks in their bedroom about school. What was wrong, she wondered again. Mrs. Rudge paused beside her desk to look, not at Ramona's workbook, but at Ramona, whose pajamas felt so damp she thought they might be shrinking. Ramona, how do you feel this morning? whispered Mrs. Rudge. Fine, answered Ramona, trying to sound as if she spoke the truth. Your cheeks are very pink, said Mrs. Rudge. I think you'd better go to the office and ask Mrs. Miller to take your temperature. Now? asked Ramona. Yes, said Mrs. Rudge. Run along. Ramona laid down her pencil and tried to look thin as she walked out of the room to a rustle of whispers from the class. What was the matter with Ramona? Was she sick? Would she have to be sent home? Once in the hall, she grasped her sweater and pajama top and pulled them up 
an instant to feel the relief of cool air against her sweaty skin. Then she took hold of both her elastic waistbands and pulled them out and in several times to fan a little cool air inside her slacks. In the office, Mrs. Miller, the school secretary, had Ramona sit on a chair and poked a thermometer under her tongue. Be sure to keep your lips closed, she said. We don't want any thermometers falling on the floor and breaking. Ramona sat still while Mrs. Miller answered the telephone and carried on a long conversation with a mother who was worried about her child's schoolwork and was anxious to talk to the principal. She sat still while a sixth-grade boy came in to use the telephone to call his mother to tell her he had forgotten his lunch money. She sat still while a mother came in to deliver a lunch to a fourth-grader who had gone off without it. Ramona sat and sat. She thought of the long day ahead, of recess and of lunchtime, and began to wish she really were sick. Maybe she was. Maybe she had a fever. A fever so high Mrs. Miller would telephone her mother at work, and her mother would come and take her home and put her to bed between cool white sheets. They would be alone in the house, just the two of them. Her mother would lay her hand on Ramona's hot forehead and give her little treats, ice cream between meals, and cold orange juice. Not fresh frozen orange juice, but fresh Fresh orange juice squeezed out of real oranges and not dumped out of a can and thinned with water. Her mother would read aloud stories from library books and would find in the bookcase the books Ramona had loved so much when she was little, especially the one about the little bear whose mother looked so soft and kind and loving in her long white apron, and the book about the bunny snug in bed who said good night to everything, mittens, a mouse, the moon, and the stars. Later, when Ramona was feeling better, her mother would tuck her upon the couch in the living room so she could watch television and even get to see the ends of old movies. Pursing her lips tight around the thermometer, Ramona sighed through her nose. Mrs. Miller, her back turned, was busy with the ditto machine. Finally, when Ramona could not sit still another second, she made a sort of angry humming noise. Mmm! Mmm! "'Oh, my goodness, Ramona,' said Mrs. Miller. "'You were so quiet, I forgot all about you. "'Thank you for buzzing like a little bee to remind me.' "'She pulled the thermometer from Ramona's mouth, "'turned it until she found the silver line that told the temperature, "'and then said, "'Run along back to your room and tell Mrs. Rudge you're just fine, okay?' "'Okay,' Ramona was disappointed. "'Now there would be no rescuing telephone call to her mother, "'only a long, sweaty day.' Oh, well, she knew she would not really have been rescued by her mother, who could not leave her work. Howie's grandmother, accompanied by Willa Jean and probably Wadger, would have come for her. Ramona paused at the drinking fountain for a long, cool drink of water and fanned more air under her clothes before she returned to room two. What did Mrs. Miller say? asked Mrs. Rudge. She says I'm fine, said Ramona. Minutes dragged. The seconds between each click of the electric clock seemed to stretch longer and longer. Ramona felt so sleepy. She wanted to put her head down on her arms and take a nap. When the recess bell finally rang, Mrs. Rudge said, Ramona, would you please come here a minute? Reluctantly, Ramona walked to Mrs. Rudge's desk. Is there something you would like to tell me? asked the teacher. Ramona looked up into Mrs. Rudge's brown eyes then down at the floor, shook her head, and looked up at Mrs. Rudge once more. Her teacher seemed so kind, so soft and plump, that Ramona longed to lean against her and tell her all her troubles, how hot she was, and how no one ever said she was her mother's girl, and how she wanted her mother to love her like a little rabbit, and how somehow all these feelings had led to pretending to be a fireman. I can keep a secret said Mrs. Rudge. I promise. This encouragement was all Ramona needed. I, I'm too warm, she confessed. I've got my pajamas on. Please, please, Mrs. Rudge, don't make me tell why, she prayed, because now that she had confessed, she felt that wearing pajamas to school was a silly thing to do. A second grader pretending to be a fireman? It was the dumbest thing she had ever imagined. Why, that's no problem, said Mrs. Rudge. Just go to the girls' bathroom and take off your pajamas. She reached into a drawer and pulled out a paper bag. Roll up your pajamas and put them in this bag and hide them in your desk. 
Ramona shook her head. I can't. As soon as she had spoken, she realized she had chosen the wrong words. Now Mrs. Rudge would say, there's no such word as can't, and Ramona would argue with herself all over again. How could there not be such a word as can't? Mrs. Rudge had just said can't, so can't had to be a word. To Ramona's relief, Mrs. Rudge merely said, why not? I don't have any underwear on, confessed Ramona. Was there amusement in Mrs. Rudge's warm brown eyes? There better not be. No, it was all right. Mrs. Rudge was not laughing at her. I see, said the teacher. That is a problem. But I don't think you need to worry about it. Your slacks and sweater are warm enough on a day like this. You mean go without any underwear? Ramona was a little shocked at the suggestion. In summer, she did not wear an undershirt. But she had always worn underpants even in the hottest weather. Why not? asked Mrs. Rudge with a wave of her hand, as if she were waving away underwear as unimportant underwear. Pooh! Well, said Ramona, halfway agreeing, but promise you won't tell my mother what I did. I promise, said Mrs. Rudge with a big smile. Now run along before you melt into a puddle right here on the floor. Ramona did as she was told, and oh, the relief she felt in the girls' bathroom when she shut herself in a cubicle and peeled off those damp pajamas, which, to her surprise, had not shrunk at all. She quickly pulled on her clothes and rolled up the pajamas as tight as she could and hid them in a paper bag. Even though skipping in the halls was forbidden, Ramona skipped. The halls were empty, recess was over, and she was late, but she still skipped because she felt as light and as cool as a spring breeze. And who would know she was not wearing underwear? Nobody, that's who. Maybe wearing underwear wasn't so important after all. Maybe after today, Ramona would skip underwear, at least in summer when she was wearing slacks. Back in room two, Ramona lifted the lid of her desk and hid her package way at the back behind her books. She pretended not to notice the curious stares of the boys and girls who were wondering why Mrs. Rudge said nothing about Ramona's being late. Instead, she looked at Mrs. Rudge, who gave her a tiny smile that said quite plainly, we have a secret, just the two of us. Ramona's heart was warm with love for her teacher. She smiled back and twitched her nose like a bunny. Thanks for listening to Storytime with Amy.